Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to be painting our first wreath which is going to be a culmination of all the foliage projects we've been doing up until now. So we're going to do a really simple wreath today. It's going to be the first of many that I plan to do with you guys. They're really satisfying and lovely to look at once you're done. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, so we need to start by giving ourselves a helping hand and a guide. So I'm going to draw a pencil circle again not too strong but of course for the sake of filming I will do it a little bit bolder than I would normally um, I've got my water we've got my brushes I've got a, an assortment of brushes here the large one is only really for mixing um, but I'm going to be using the small ones because we're going to be painting a simple foliage wreath and what I'm going to be doing is using the actual line of the circle here as my main guide. Um, we are going to be doing all sorts of wreaths over time on my YouTube channel, so do not worry in terms of this being a fairly simple wreath. This is just a really good starting point. Do you like my nails, by the way? I'm rather pleased with them. Um, <laughs> right, okay, so I'm just mixing up some colors here. So we've got the cadmium yellow with a little bit of sap green. So it's always sensible to mix up your colours before you start. Some might say, Harriet, it was a good idea to mix your colours before you start filming. But to be honest, I think it's really, really good to just be showing you the entire process from start to finish. I've also got a little bit of scrap paper up here just to test out some of my colours because they always look a bit different on the page as to how you expect them to look in the palette. So a little bit of sap green and French ultramarine. This palette of colours you'll have seen quite a few times on my foliage videos. Um, the great thing about watercolour is it can stay in the palette, can live there and you can just wake it up each time. And even if you've sort of smeared a whole load of another colour into one of your blobs of colour, it really doesn't matter. You can just wipe it off with a clean wet brush and let it zip up again and start again. Get some lovely green there and then we'll just do one more sort of bluey green colour with the Prussian blue. Woo, mixed in. It's a strong one, that Prussian blue. Okay, we've got some really nice colours there. Um, so we are going to paint a foliage wreath today. Let's have a little look at what we've got then. We've got Prussian, green, uh, Prussian blue with the sap green, then we've got French ultramarine with the sap green, then we've got gold green, nice. Then we've got cadmium yellow with sap green, really nice. And then we've got sap green, really nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. Right, let's get started then. So I am going to be working, as I said, using the miniature versions that we were painting in the last session. So that's why I thought it would be handy to have this uh, just close by for reference so I can just have a little look at what I'm going to paint. It's funny, you sort of, you start off with a blank page and sometimes there's something very intimidating <laughs> about starting with a blank page, but don't worry, don't be put off. Let's just get started and start painting. So the purpose of today is this simple wreath. What we're going to do is we're going to do a fairly, um, stop saying simple wreath, Harriet, because that is what it is. Uh, we are just going to do one sprig, one sprig, just keep going. And I'm going to have them all go in the same direction. When you're painting wreaths, that's a choice to make really is whether they're going to be poking out at all different angles. Of course, you approach this in the same way a florist might when they're putting a wreath together. Either they're angling everything going in one direction or it's going off in all different directions. So let's start off. So using the line of the circle initially as my guide and then I'm just going to have it coming off just a little bit 
and let's start with some simple smooth sided leaves. There we go, so we all remember the very first time that we learnt how to do a leaf. And I'm just going to take a slightly more concentrated dab of that mix and pop it in there. Now, the big question is, which way do we go? Do we start layering things up on top or do we start sort of poking things out from underneath? Now, there are sort of schools of thought that could uh, suggest going either way. I personally like doing it so that I'm going with the next thing that is actually underneath that previous sprig and I like to sort of paint it in a gap as it were. So I'm going to pop a little fern in next. So you can see I've just not painted where it looks like it has just overlapped underneath that previous sprig. So our little fern, this is just a very simple sort of glade fern, a smooth sided one and then we can just bring in some little dabs there. Fantastic and I'm going to add a little bit of sap green up the middle there. Lovely. Okay, so then what should we choose next? I think we're going to go for some serrated edge leaves, so a bit of classic sap green. And I'm always finding the circle pencil line. And let's get our serrated edge leaves in there. So wreath painting is such a satisfying pastime for watercolour flowers because it looks really good and it's quite a quick and easy way of sort of showing your achievements really with your painting. So there are a little gap again. One, two, three. And then we've got these tiny little slivers here and there that just give it a nice little bit of depth. Okay, let's keep going now. I fancy a little bit of this Prussian blue colour, but I'm going to just get a little bit more of the Prussian blue because I fancy doing some eucalyptus. So I'm going to get a really translucent version of it and I'm going to find that circle it's not the end of the world if you do overlap onto the previous one. And then if you haven't seen any of my eucalyptus tutorials so far, just go back and have a look over the previous few episodes because we've got a whole sort of willow eucalyptus and then we've got a simplified true blue which is what I'm doing here as well as its miniature counterpart so I'm gonna basically be going around once in this wreath and then I'm going to be going around again and sort of adding detail adding second layers adding all sorts of things a bit more of a concentrated version of that lovely and this is a nice opportunity where one can really dovetail into the other And play around with the concentration of your paint. So I had a really, really deep, dark stem there and then chose to go very dilute. For the leaves and again, we'll come back in and be able to add a little bit more to that there. OK, let's go for a bit of a classic fern and I'm going to start that one. 
little way back. And we're just going to paint some really simple leaf outlines. And you'll see that I don't need to be going back into my palette loads for lots of extra paint the whole time. It's just so little actually sort of going on my brush that you really don't need much. Okay, and another serrated leaf. So all I'm doing, I haven't planned this in advance, but I'm just looking at sort of what's come before and what I want to paint next. I've got a little hair on my brush, let's get rid of that. It's really interesting, so if you paint certain leaves from different angles with your hand, or with, you know, uh, say I'm coming down on one side so I'm having to sort of come at it from a different angle, it can be so much harder. So that serrated edge leaf for me was quite hard just then. Whereas when I painted it that, in that angle, it was a lot easier to come to. Right, let's get some, let's get some more yellowy green. We haven't had much of that. And I'm going to twist it in and then having it come out here. But that means we can have a long leaf come there. So some of these pieces are sort of almost like supporting artists to other little bits. Okay, let's do a lovely little fern. So I've sort of found using the two tenths brush really, really good so far. It hasn't sort of made me want to change up. It feels like it offers me enough control because it's small enough, but then enough coverage to do some of the larger leaves without having to sort of keep on reaching my brush back in and doing lots of brush strokes. Okay, this is looking nice. So we're about just nearly halfway through. Let's pop in some more eucalyptus. And I think I'm gonna try just bringing the eucalyptus in like that. Again, I can just use the, the colour that's already in existence on that bit of painted eucalyptus. I didn't need much more. Okay, let's just go for some really simple classic leaves again. So I'm just trying to sort of imagine where that leaf would go if it wasn't behind the eucalyptus there. And you can just tidy up those shapes sometimes with maybe a little bit of more concentrated colour to give it a little bit more of an edge. And let's go back around, let's have some gold green. I don't think we've really had much of that so far. And let's go for another fern. I don't think you have to stick to say this colour will always be these kinds of leaves. Um, you can be creative mixed up, there's really no rules. The only guidance I'd give is that you set yourself a colour palette first, like I've done up here, and stick to that. And really choosing the right colours is a real make or break for it for a good wreath. Okay, now I have the awkward bit where I'm trying to get my hand up round round the side, but we'll we'll keep going, we'll persevere on. 
Uh, right, so I'm looking there, I'm looking across there, it feels like maybe some more serrated edge leaves coming in. And I always want to get a bit more concentrated paint on my brush to do those initial branches there. And then, let's see, just with a clean wet brush, I can get quite a lot. off there. So yeah, I think um, definitely when you're starting out in watercolour, I'll get a bit of colour on there now, one of the challenges is um, trusting yourself and trusting in your skill because you've got a lot of skill. Honestly, watercolour is a real cheerleader when it comes to making you feel good about yourself. Um, but trusting the fact that you don't need to keep on adding more colour onto your piece because it really, uh, there's so much pigment there already. Watercolour is a lot like food colouring, I always say that in my classes, um, because you just need the tiniest bit, it's so concentrate, it really doesn't need, need much at all. I'm going to do a cheeky little curled in one, which I might come to regret, who knows, that's very blue isn't it? Let's just add a green to it now. They call this a, is this a maiden hair fern? Can't remember, there are so many ferns. Lovely. Okay, let's go for a bit of bluey colour this time. I think we're due another bit of eucalyptus, don't you? So again, just seeing where on that circle I can maybe overlap and this one will come along the circle there, lovely. I think just keep looking at the wreath as a whole and you will soon be able to make decisions on the angle and type of foliage you're going to paint next. And also remember to enjoy it. It is fun after all. I promise you it's fun. <laughs> all right, another little Fern. and I think we'll curl it sort of a little bit kinked out to the side there. I'm just doing that nice sort of slightly rounded teardrop shape which I'm a big fan of. It's a little bit more stylized, but it's nice. And then what we'll do, once this is dried, we will be able to rub out the pencil, but for now it's a very, very handy guide. The other cool thing with watercolour like this on such a small scale is it dries a lot more quickly, um, which on some hand is great, on the other hand, not so good because you want, like, I wanted to be able to run a bit of colour up through there. And if it had dried completely quickly, I wouldn't have been able to do that. But it does also mean that we're able to keep working our way round and not run the risk of smudging too much. But that's a famous last words thing because I am so <laughs> concerned when I'm doing these videos live that I will stick my hand in and just make a big fool of myself. But I guess you know I'm only human as well, so you're not going to hold it against me, I imagine. And then from there we can see, we could probably do with another little one there. Okay, so we're starting to close the gaps. We need to think 
how we are going to fill in those last ones with enough variation. So at this point, sometimes I think, well, I can start to work a little bit backwards as well. And just think about what else I want to add in. Um, I think we'll have another really simple little green sprig that just comes up with the little outline leaves. Again, this is a bit more stylized, this one, but no less lovely. So all I'm doing is drawing an outline of a leaf. And they're growing at parallel points, so we just make sure we've got a leaf growing off both sides there. Okay, not much more room to go. Hmm. Just looking around, just sort of surveying what I haven't painted for a while. Right, let's do a serrated edge leaf. And oh look, that brings us round. And I do find it easier <laughs> to paint those serrated edges when I'm coming at it from this angle. We've definitely got room in there for a few more. Okay, so that is one way uh, all the way around. And now what I'm just gonna have a quick look at is adding a tiny bit more detail and maybe filling in and evening out the shape. But I think it looks pretty good, to be honest. It's not too uneven. Um, so I'm going to now take a little bit of concentrated sap green and I'm just going to add a few extra little bits. Actually, when I say concentrated sap green, I think I'm going to mix in some of that French ultramarine. And just come down with the same brush because this is now dried and just give a little bit more definition to some of these. So I'm gonna go sap green on here. It doesn't just have to be centers of leaves, little leaf veins. You could do some little extra little bracts there. And all with the eucalyptus now, when we come round for a second layer, we can add in a few more, just a few more eucalyptus leaves because they do grow in pairs but because it's so small we don't want to overload it too much but because we paint these nice and translucent they will dry beautifully as well And just adding in these little accents just helps bring out some bit more detail in some of these bits. I don't think you have to do it on every single one. help you to sort of shape it a little bit more and there we have eucalyptus again lovely and then I'm going to do a little sort of swipe up the middle of that and maybe add in a little bit more concentrated colour of a swipe there as well. 
ferns don't well you could do a little bit more of a fur on a fern but they don't need a huge amount more I don't think maybe a little bit more up the stem And again, if you were looking and thought, oh, it looks a bit sort of a bit thin in places, say here, you might want to add an actual leaf in. Go for it. But I think it's really important to sort of sit back and look at it as a whole, because you don't always see quite clearly when your nose is sort of an inch from the page. Actually, that is a good point. I think it is <laughs> very easy to sort of get yourself all hunched over and right up close to the page um, but you will your well your shoulders will start to tell you that that's not a good idea but just sort of give your shoulders a bit of a roll and just relax yourself I mean I find this hand turns into a bit of a claw if it's stuck there for too long I just have to remind myself just relax okay I think I'm going to give this little fern a little bit extra on some of those. Very nearly there. So it's basically a twice round job. And how lovely would this look on a nice card, maybe with something written in between in the middle there. That would be quite cool. And these are just about dry. So that helps us finish off. And there you have it, a lovely, foliage wreath. So I hope you enjoyed painting that. I find them super satisfying to do and they impress everyone so you can paint them all for birthday cards and Christmas cards but that's a little bit further down the line. So if you like the video uh, don't forget to hit the like button and of course comment below and let me know how you found that and of course if you haven't already hit the subscribe button. Okay I'll see you again next time. Bye!